Okay, I've digressed a little bit because uh, one of my detractors has claimed that intelligent design <coughs> and irreducible complexity has been completely rebutted, and we're in the last stages of losing our entire battle to the evolutionist uh, science. Let's take a look. Let's go to index B, where we have a bacteria flagellum that is evidently irreducibly complex. And uh, Professor Miller has debunked the idea that it is irreducibly complex, complex and uh, has gone ahead and uh, said this is the one big punch that, that missed and we're down and out. It's all evolution by Darwin and no, no intelligent designer is out there. Well, let's look at the uh, We've already looked at the first part of this. Um, the principal claim, this professor says, made by adherence, adherence of the creationist view is that they can detect the presence of intelligent design in complex bi biological systems. And here's my response. Certainly this applies to the evolutionist point of view as well. For you all have implied that that you have outwardly stated that the and outwardly stated that the universe and especially the earth have such an awesome and inexplicably complex order about them far beyond the capacity of man to understand it and create anything within that universe that even com compares to the simplest of life forms so i am surprised that uh, the evolutionists refuse to consider the plausibility or possibility of an intelligent agency <clears throat> You have become attached to the belief system of evolution without scientific proof that there actually has been evolution over great periods of time that creates one species after another. Remember, science, observability of an actual evolvement of one complete species into another, repeatability of that precise event again and again, and falsifiability control of that event over and over again must be done. So your rhetoric is not scientific, rather demeaning and ridiculing and shameful. Can a true scientist actually rule out such, such uh, things that due to personal preference? Man has not even discovered an accurate progression of a life form and how it might have is scientifically evolved into another without forcing assumptions to be true in order to prove those assumptions. <clears throat> After so many years have gone by and still there have been no proved out intermediary life forms discovered, especially one that completely rules out a creator of far greater intelligence than man can conceive of, who created all life forms, even those of similar design, without having to have them evolve, but including a marvelous capacity within each species of variation within that species, whose marvel, whose motivations are largely not well perceived, they're not evil, albeit they are largely made clear in the one reliable book for all man to understand. Uh, it's a reliable book because there's evidently no contradictions. It predicts the future perfectly. Let's go with the Bible first until something better comes along. <clears throat> Science is completely changing momentarily on every single issue, on the evolutionary issue. So, but the professor says as evidence, they cite a number of specific examples, including the vertebrate blood clotting cascade, the eukaryotic cilium, and mo most notably the eubacterial flagellum. We'll look at the first and the third. Of all these examples, the flagellum has been presented so often as a counterexample to evolution that it might well be considered the poster child of the modern anti-evolution movement. Variations of its image, look at figure one below, might now appear on the web pages of any evolution groups like the Discovery Institute and the, the covers of intelligent design books such as William Dembski's No Free Lunch. To anti-evolutionists, the high status of the flagellum <clears throat> reflects the supposed <coughs> fact that could not possibly have been produced to an evolutionary pathway. Well, my, I maintain the elephant in the room is the persistent refusal to consider the plausibility of an intelligent creator designer and then refute it, which is largely ruled out for no good reason, just personal preference. Because you proved your case doesn't mean my case is also not equally or better uh, proved out. The universe is, after all, an awesomely complex, hence intelligent uh, entity, so why not an intelligent designer? Here's the uh, 
mechanical drawing of this, you bacterial flagellum. All the different components, they're microscopic. The eubacterial flagellum is an ion powered rotary motor anchored in the membrane surrounding the bacterial cell. The schematic diagram highlights the assembly process of the bacterial flagellar filament and the cap filament complex. There is, to be sure, nothing new or novel in, in anti evolution is pointing to a complex or intricate natural structure, which he admits this to be, and professing skepticism that it could have been could not have been produced by random processes of mutation and selection, natural selection. Well, we don't see specific proofs of this complex thing being given even stage one of a, of a mutation uh, into an improved operation. Nonetheless, the argument from personal credulity, as such sediment has been appropriately described, has been a weapon of little value in the anti-evolutionary moment. They determined they're winning the battle. Anyone can state at any time that they cannot imagine how evolutionary mechanisms might have produced a certain species, organ, or structure, and, and these people do. Such statements obviously are personal. Well, they may be, but they're also scientific. If you, if you don't have a scientific explanation, you can say this, we don't have the science. And they say more about the limitations of those who make them than they do about the limitations of Darwinian mechanisms. Well, there isn't a Darwinian mechanism that explains it yet. Could I not say the same about you, I say? Let's see. Nonetheless, let's reverse the argument. The arguments from personal incredulity that such sentiment has been appropriately described has been a weapon of little value in the anti-creation movement as well. Anyone can state at any time that they cannot imagine the existence of an intelligent designer who might have produced a certain species, organ, or structure. It goes both ways. The evidence. Such statements obviously are personal. And they say more about the limitations of those who make them than they do about whether or not an actual intelligent designer does exist. So the professor goes on, the hallmark of the intelligent design movement, however, is that it purports to rise above the level of personal skepticism. It claims to have found a reason why evolution could not have produced a structure like the bacterial flagellum, a reason based on sound, solid scientific evidence. Why does the intelligent design movement regard a flagellum as unevolvable? Because it is said to possess a quality known as irreducible complexity. Irreducibly complex structures, we are told, could not have been produced by evolution or, for that matter, by any natural process. They do exist, however, and therefore they must have been produced by something. That something can only be an outside intelligent agency operating beyond the laws of nature. I don't know about that. <clears throat> an intelligent designer. Suppose the intelligent designer created the laws of nature. And one of the laws of nature is supernatural superintendence over his creation. We're not able to, to utilize that law, but he is. Have you thought about that? That simply stated is the core of the new argument from the design and the intellectual basis of the intelligent design movement. So, I maintain, ignoring the investigation of the probability of the eubacteria flagellum evolving, you have to get the probability versus the estimated age of the universe, versus an intelligent designer's existence is simply not scientific nor credible. If your probability of this flagellum is beyond the age of the universe, I think we better look for something else like an intelligent designer. Only because the majority of mankind has been brainwashed, the reason for the worldwide flood in the first place where God destroyed mankind because he's been brainwashed against God, can man dare to say that there is no creator, intelligent designer because we have voted him out of existence, we refuse to accept the fact that he exists, even though there's evidence that he does? Mankind who can't even find one missing link after all of this time? Hmm. The great irony of the flagellum, the professor goes on to say, is increasing acceptance as an icon of anti-evolution is the fact that research had demolished its status as an example of irreducible complexity almost at the very moment that it was first proclaimed. The purpose of this article is to explore the arguments by which the flagellum's notoriety has been achieved and to, re to, to review the research developments that have now undermined the very foundation of those arguments. So the argument's origins. The flagellum owes its status, status principally to Darwin's black box, a book by author Michael Behe, and he's a uh, biologist, that employed in it a carefully crafted anti-evolution -evol argument, building upon William Paley's well-known argument from design. 
that he sought to bring this argument to two centuries forward into the realm of biochemistry. Like Paley, Behe appealed to his readers to appreciate the intricate complexity of living organisms as evidence for the work of a designer. <clears throat> Unlike Paley, <clears throat> however, he raised the argument to a new level, claiming to have discovered a scientific principle that could be used to prove that certain structures could not have been produced by evolution. That principle goes by the name of irreducible complexity. An irreducibly complex structure is defined as a single system composed of several well-matched interacting parts that contribute to the basic function, wherein the removal of any of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. Why would such systems present difficulties for Darwinism? Well, because they, he says, because they could not possibly have been produced by the process of evolution. But he says, an incredibly complex system cannot be produced directly by numerous successive slight modifications of a precursor system because any precursor to an irreducibly complex system that is missing a part is by definition non-functional. Since natural selection can only choose systems that are already working, then if a biological system cannot be produced gradually, it would have to arise as an integrated unit in one fell swoop for natural selection to have anything to act on. <clears throat> Well, the author goes on to say, <clears throat> the phrase numerous successive slight modifications is not accidental. The very same words were used by Charles Darwin in The Origin of Species in describing the conditions that had to be met for his theory to be true. As Darwin wrote, if one could find an organ or structure that could not have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, his theory would absolutely break down. Why not? To enter evolutionists, the bacterial flagellum is not now regarded as an exact such a case. An irreducibly complex system which cannot be produced directly by numerous successive slight modifications. A system that could not have evolved, a desperation punch, well, that just might win the fight in the final round, a tool with which the theory of evolution can be brought down. Pretty good tool, if it's proved. The logic of irreducible complexity. So there, on this title, I remark, so you do admit that there are no innumerable complex structures whose detailed evolutionary origins are not known. Have you considered, out of not knowing this, that, that they may not have evolved at all, since you don't know? Or is that ruled out because of your personal belief system that is not based on science? Well, it wouldn't be. You can't prove it, but you have to come up with the best educated guess based on scientific evaluation of things that we can prove. Are you stubborn about only accepting what you believe and not considering anything else when you simply are ignorant of the facts of how these things did evolve? What about the theories other than the two we are discussing here? If another belief system better fits the, better fits the facts, why not switch horses in midstream and come closer to reality? Ever hear of the God particle, string theory, or multiverses, universes? And if you do prove out your case as a corroborated better it doesn't disprove intelligent designer. Because you have to disprove it in every case. Therefore, the professor goes on saying, in fashioning an argument against evolution, one might pick nearly a, any cellular structure, the ribosome, for example, and claim correctly, he says correctly, that its origin has not been explained in detail by evolution. He's explaining, we don't understand. Well, and you can't say you do. Such arguments are easy to make, of course, but nature, the nature of scientific progress renders them far more compelling. Why? The lack of a detailed current explanation for a structure, organ, or process does not mean that science will never come up with it. Well, in the meantime, you have to be logical about it and say, we just don't know. We don't know if an intelligent designer does exist or if evolution did it, but we don't have the details yet. But don't say it's absolutely wrong. We can't have an intelligent designer. True if you are objective, they aren't. It seems that since you are largely not following the scientific method, you can't because you can't reproduce or observe or falsify and are operating on your own preferences. How many of the theories have been proved wrong over the years and replaced with ones in your own camp that do no better without proving out a missing link intermediate species? No proof yet, but we'll come up with it. As an example, one might consider the question of how left-right asymmetry arises in vertebrate development, a question that was beyond explanation until the 1990s. 
1990, one might have argued that the body's left-right asymmetry could just as well be explained by the intervention of a